privilege to have with us again this morning, Mark Cahill. And so I'll turn it over to Mark. Noah's our papa. I said, hold up, hold up, y'all. 
I give you the whole thing. Like, evolution's 100 percent true. You can have the whole shooting match. It's all true. I said, I still got one more question for you. They said, what? I said, where did matter come from? Because you have to have that first molecule correct. If that is a true statement, that's going to evolve into uh, into the animals, into us here. Where did the first piece of matter come from? And guess what? In atheist evolution, can they answer that question? They actually cannot answer. They'll try to say it's always been here, okay? Uh, but they can't. Can we answer that question? Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, time. God created <coughs> heaven and the earth. See, we can answer that question. That's what it all comes back to again, okay? So again, those are great questions to use, but it comes back to the Bible. Very careful when you put in front of your kids' eyes because I know what's going to happen to them on a college campus. Okay, they're getting hammered. And moms and dads also tell you this before I start this talk. Be very careful of Christian colleges today. Be very careful of Christian colleges today. Because when a kid goes to a Christian college, they automatically take their guard and what? Drop their guard. They lower it. That's exactly right. They drop it. And that's when the false teaching comes in. Uh, do you know that Wheaton College over in uh, Chicago, Wheaton College not only teaches evolution, they teach evolution as fact. It's not even theory, it's fact. Uh, one of my uh, students, I had a uh, Lauren back in the day, went to Wheaton. He called me, I said, Mr. Cato, uh, can you come up here and do a chapel service at Wheaton? I said, Lauren, and you got to kind of get invited. You can't just show up and speak at chapel. I said, why, Lauren? He said, well, our speaker this morning, uh, he was speaking and he said, let's pray. And he said, our heavenly parents, our heavenly parents, wait a minute, you just opened up what? The feminine right there, right? As the world's going towards God and his worship, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, Gaia, okay? As we're heading towards that, that was opened up by a speaker at we College to pray to our heavenly parents, okay? How far have we fallen? Okay, it's time we start standing up for truth. Is that right? This talk is called the lukewarm no more. Let's pray. Father, thank you for just some wonderful chance to be here. Uh, thank you for uh, Carl and his messages, Pastor Glenn. Good truth in this time. It's been fun to listen to the messages, Father. You just hammer us with the truth. But are we going to take this truth and do anything with it? That's the question. Make sure this is an obedient group to the days to come, Father. We thank you for it. We ask in the great name of your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. I got your Bibles. All right, got your Bibles? You're about to open it, so be what? Be careful. You're going to hit some verses today that are flat out dangerous. That many people want to apply to other people, but don't want to apply to the person you look at in the mirror. And that's where these verses belong, the one I see in the mirror every day. Okay? All right, grab your Bibles. Be what? Be careful when you open okay? The truth is in this book. Eternal truth forever and ever. That the grass may wither, the flower may fade, but the word of God shall endure it for ever. That's my kind of book. Okay, all right, let's go to the book of Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 3. Okay, Revelation 3. And we're going to look at, we're going to start in verse 14. Let's go to Revelation 3. And we're going to go to verse. 14. This is the salutation. Verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the what? Creation of God. Boy, we still get back to creation in the fifth Okay. Um, this uh, this church here, the Laodiceans, it was the only one of the seven churches written to individuals. Laodiceans. Okay. All those are written to the church whole, Sardis and Philadelphia. Okay. So we're written to individuals out of the seven churches. Uh, Laodicea was a very a famous city. It was a very wealthy city. Okay. It was a New York, it was a London, it was a Paris type of city back in the day. Right? It's talking about here the faithful and the true witness. Do you know every witness who has followed the Lord Jesus Christ has failed? But there has been one witness that has not failed. What was his name? That was Jesus, and that's why there's been such a denigration of the biblical Jesus in our world today, okay? Because of who he said, what he said, we're trying to make it down just into a man, just as someone that said that sin and things like that, which of course is not true at all, okay? Um, since the church is the living expression of Jesus on planet Earth, is the church today, 2014, truly reflecting what he and what is? Is it truly reflecting that, yes or no? No. 
No, and if it's not, then it's our job to do something to get it back to reflecting the Lord Jesus Christ correctly in 2014 in the people's lives as we live here, okay? Uh, verse 15, this is the complaint in verse 15. I know thy works that are neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot, okay? Verse 15, so what we have here, we look at a scale from 0 to 10, we have the 0. We have the, we have the angry atheist that hates God. Okay? Wants nothing to do with God and Jesus Christ. Just just curse them and left and right. Okay, they just have an anger towards God. And then we've got the ten over here. All right, and the ten is that person that loves Jesus Christ. Okay, a prayer warrior on the wall and stuff like that. The person that loves to read the scripture. Okay, can't wait to encourage the church. Okay, loves the soul of the church. They're the ten. But the question is about the group here, the four, five, and six in the middle. Okay? Not neither cold nor hot, but kind of the mushy middle. Okay, what's the word that's going to come up in just a second? What's the word? The lukewarm, this middle group, that a lot of people are okay sitting here. Okay? I said that prayer when I was eight years old. Okay? But now I just want to follow the twins and follow the bison hockey team and do all this. Stuff, okay? I want to chase my dream of being a millionaire. Okay? I'm the mushy. I know that's wrong. I know I should be really down here 8, 9, and 10, but I'm kind of hanging out in the mushy middle and I'm going to stay right there and do that. And God has an opinion for that, okay? I wish it was cold or hot, and many of us sit in the four, five, or six. I was speaking to a church in Dallas, Texas. It was one week after the University of Texas just won the, the national title of football a few years ago. So I'm speaking in Dallas, Texas. Is that football country? Yes or no? Crazy football country. Uh, one week after they won the title, that was a Monday night, this is a Sunday. So I asked them uh, about a thousand, about, you know, about two thousand churches, really big church there. And I said, Red Oak, Texas. And I said, How many people in the last week have taken the time to share your faith with the lost person? Talk about sin, salvation, judgment to come, the cross of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. How many of you have done that in the past week? Two thousand people, how many hands went up? How many? Give me an answer, please. Three. Three, zero. I then asked them, how many people in the last week watched a college football game between the University of Southern California and the University of Texas on Monday night? 2,000 people, how many hands went up? All Every single hand that I could see went up. Okay? That's what you call a lukewarm church. When the day a football game has more preeminence in our life than the souls of people we meet every single day, that is a four, five, and six church. Okay? It is lukewarm, it's the mushy middle. And what's going to happen? You're going to stay there, you're going to do something about that. Okay? Um, Y'all remember Bobby Knight, the, the coach of Bobby Knight for Indiana University back in the day, I played college basketball. And uh, Bobby Knight, IU coach, the one who threw the chair, the, the chair across the, the floor and stuff like that. Let's say you play basketball at Indiana University for Bobby Knight. Okay? And you decided for Coach Knight that you were going to give Coach Knight 50% effort. 50% effort in your practices, 50% effort in the film room, 50% effort in a classroom, and you say, Coach Knight, I love playing with you, you're going to get 50% effort from me every single time you see me. Okay, how do you think Coach Bobby Knight may respond to that when you said it to him? Okay. Yeah, yeah, anybody who knows Coach Knight, uh, he's probably not going to take this too kindly. He's not going to walk up to you and say, oh, son, come here. Give me a hug. That was so nice of you to give me. Give me that. Okay. No, he's probably throwing you across the court. Okay. Bobby Knight had a wonderful time, man. He was amazing. Okay. But wait a minute. We go through life and give God forty percent, fifty percent, and we think we're doing God a favor like that. And we're in this mushy middle. And in this mushy middle, when you're ever there in the lukewarm middle, you don't like what you see in the mirror. But you have to make a decision. Do you stay there or do you change and go to the 8, 9, and 10 where you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ to do that, okay? Um, I know thy works. Nothing is hidden from God. He knows the works of the Laodiceans, is what he's saying, okay? Everything is laid bare before the eyes of God. Um, a neutral position of the church toward the true biblical Jesus is unacceptable. Go to verse 16, okay? And it says, so then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will let spew thee out of my mouth. Okay? Um, 
Jesus has no commendation for this church. He never has one commendation for the Laodicean church uh, when you read this section of 14 through 22. But much to complain of, okay? The true witnesses speak, I will spew you. The word means vomit you. The word in the Greek means a violent reaction out of my mouth. Okay? Um, can the life of a Christian make the God of the universe sick to his stomach? Yes or no? Yes. The answer is yes to that. And think about that for a second. If all he did be on that cross, okay, it's my only hope that I've got to get through this life and the life to come. And yet I can live a life that makes him literally sick to his stomach. Watch the life of Mark Hale walking through this planet and doing that. Um, I've had food poisoning twice while I've been in hospitals. I just had gallstones where, when, when, the, when the, the gallstones are pushing to get out and the gallbladder is expanding, it's pushing against the stomach. And uh, you, you literally go through these violent growing up periods uh, where literally nothing's coming out and you, you can't, you still keep going up anyways. And this, this reaction is just an unbelievable reaction of the human body. And yet it made me think about this, that that type of reaction I can cause to the God of the universe when it becomes a mark, 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 I, I, I type of life, instead of living for God and Jesus Christ to do that. Okay? Think about that. Um, many times the Savior's impression of our life is very different than our self-perception of our lives. We think we're A-OK. -okay. We think we're A-9, 10, and we're living four, five, and six, and we're OK with it. Do that. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, at a music festival witnessing, I'm talking to two young men, uh, asking questions about God and Jesus Christ, and giving them all the right answers about God and Jesus Christ, with a cigarette in one hand, a beer in the other hand, and a hat song that said, All American Drinking Tea. They grew up in church in the South. They can answer any question you want about the Bible and Jesus Christ, they'd rather live for the world than the sin of the world and do that. Okay? Think about that for a second. Uh, I was at a, a, there was a youth pastor's convention in Atlanta, so I went over to visit some friends there. Day three of the convention, I took some friends out to eat. We go to a restaurant right next to this big uh, George Bush Congress Center. So it's full of youth pastors for three days. I witnessed to the waiter, great conversation. I said, sir, you've been serving all these, uh, you know, younger men over here and stuff for three days. Yeah, I said, it's just a youth pastor's convention. He said, I've been serving for three straight days. I said, in three days, how many of those youth pastors have taken the time to share with you about Jesus Christ in eternity since you've been serving them for three days. What was his answer? Mm -hmm. He said, sir, in all my years of being a waiter, you're the first person ever to talk to me about God and Jesus Christ. What were those you pastors doing? You see the law stand right in front of you, you're more worried about the food in your stomach. But now you know what's going to be taught to the kids in those youth groups, right? If, 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 if you're a pastor or the pastor's mom and dad, if souls don't matter, how can it matter to the kids? The youth groups of today, I call it pizza, yo-yos, and six flags. And pizza, yo-yos, and six flags are killing our kids today. They need good, biblical, solid truth. You need to get some Carl Kirby DVDs off back and play them to your youth at your church. Okay, they need good, strong, solid truth. They need to study the scriptures. All right? I am so sick and tired of walking into church. I'm in a church the other day, foosball table. Okay, um, uh, ping pong tables, video game consoles. They can sit over there and play video games and stuff. Excuse me, if you want to go into a fun zone, go to a fun zone somewhere. It shouldn't be the youth part of your church. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's not what church is for. You're there to study the Word of God, learn the Word of God. If you want to be entertained, stay home. Play the video games at home, but that's what our youth is becoming. Pizza, the yo-yos and sickness, and we're shocked. When our youth walk away from Jesus Christ, we're shocked. When the Southern Baptist Convention did a survey of its youth, that 88% of Southern Baptist youth will ditch their faith in Jesus Christ by their senior year in college. Nine out of ten of our kids walk away, and we're okay with that? If I see a problem, I hate gallstones. My first question is, how did it get caused in my body? I've done all this research. I know more about the gallbladder. Right? I'll be a Dr. Cato soon. I can teach you more on the gallbladder, okay? Um, but wait, and we all of a sudden have having a semantic class. How do we have so much homosexuality in the world, you know, all of a sudden in 2014? Well, what happened in 20 or 30 years to get us here? What about breast cancer? It's come out of nowhere. It's been, my question is not that we had a breast cancer. Well, how did it occur? I want to know the why of things, why we get to certain things. It's not 
difficult to figure out why our kids walk with God in Jesus Christ. Because we have different idols in this lifetime. They're seeing many of us as adults as four, five, and six, and they want to see eight, nines, and tens. That's what they want to see. And mom and dad, you should see that eight, nine, and ten in their life your entire time and do that, okay? Um, a, a youth group I work with in uh, Columbus, Georgia, um, these kids got so fired up for sharing their faith in Jesus Christ. Um, uh, I worked with the kids I wasn't from youth group, uh, but when they would go on youth trips, um, they would go to Six Flags, you know, like amusement parks and things like that. So they would do the roller coaster, and they would tell me, Mr. Kale, you know how the zigzag line goes? They said, Mr. Kale, if you do it just right, you can actually get three conversations going at the same time. You remember when you zigzag and you stay by next to the same person in the next row over? They said, you can actually get three going and you keep it straight in your head. This one youth group, same group, uh, they went to a bowling alley because they were going to have a youth night at the bowling alley. Okay? What do our kids need to go to a bowling alley for, first of all? Why don't you take them to the streets to share their faith in Jesus Christ? Okay? Why don't you take them out there and do that? Okay? Why don't you take them to a college campus over here where they're going to be at one day anyways? Hey, moms and dads, why don't you take them to the bar section of town and walk the streets and share Jesus Christ with people? Amen. Okay? Because about 95% of your kids will wind up in the bar section of the day. Yes. Now, I don't mean out there sitting and stuff. They just might be out there with some college friends going to a restaurant there. But wouldn't you want God to tap their hearts and say, hey, remember you've been here before? You were here with mom and dad, weren't you? Hey, what were you doing here? Say, oh, we were handing tracks out talking to lost people. Wouldn't you want to plant that seed in their heart before they actually walk in that same place again later in life and do that? You're actually protecting your child by doing that. These kids went to the bowling alley. They told me later, Mr. Cato, we witnessed to every single person in the bowling alley. They handed out gospel tracts to people. They would go sit with people that were over there, you know, get ready to bowl stuff. They hand out tracts. They witnessed to everyone in the bowling alley, and then they bowled. See, these kids had a different mindset. They didn't want to be four, five, and six, okay? Um, think about this. The chilly spiritual atmosphere of the Church of England is what drove John Wesley to start those outside meetings that became known for the religious fervor of the dead. The chilly atmosphere of the Methodist Church drove William Booth to be the red hot salvationist that he was. Okay, um, we don't want mechanical churches. Okay, they're just social type churches. Okay, but do you notice a little warmness in our churches today? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you notice that, is that going to spur you on to do something great for the Most High God, or are you just going to fit in? Because if you decide to do something great for God at your church, now you're going to get oh come on man, you're getting too on fire. You're one of those Jesus freaks, okay? Hey, people won't listen to somebody like you. Carl and I can tell you more stories or witness to people on airplanes, but people swear people won't listen to us on airplanes. Just people we talk to us say, yes, people will listen to us. They're looking for a nice presentation, conversation, conversation with somebody that will give them some truth, wrapped in love, speak the truth in love, okay? But if you don't like what's going on, what are you doing about it? Are you challenging the four, fives, and six to start heading this direction right here? Because I'm going to be honest with you, if someone is newly saved and they're a two, and they're heading this way, well, if someone's a seven or eight, but they've decided to head this way, going back towards the world, I think God is much more pleased with that too, heading the right direction. Okay? I'm not actually concerned what number you're at today, I'm just concerned what direction you're heading. Okay? And the direction of the cross is that way. And are you walking that way and teaching that to your people that you will not be satisfied? with a four, five, and six lifestyle. Because God's not satisfied with it as well. Okay? Um, think about these quotes from Christian books today. If I find Christ, I will find my true self. If I find my true self, I will find Christ. That's in a Christian book in the store today. My heart is distinctly what? With you. Wait again. I'm not trying to try and find my true self. I need to become a new creation is what I need to be. Okay? That's in a bookstore. You can get there, okay? In a book at these stores. Today, I personally believe that while Jesus came to open the door to God's house, all human beings can walk through that door, whether they know about Jesus or not. Today, I see it as my call to help every person claim his or her own, his or her own way to God. Think about this junk that we've got out there coming and just being held with us, okay? But if I don't get the authority of Scripture, and test everything. Uh, remember I told you last night about the guy that was listening on the live stream? And part of his email was T-E-T-E. -T -E. He caught that and I said it. He said, test everything and test everybody. 
like, that hit him. Okay, he wrote it in email to me. TDT tests everything and tests everybody against what book? This book. Okay, this is your state. That's how I know those quotes are so, so off base and do that, okay? Um, we were witnessing uh, last week or the week before the Lady Gaga concert. Or Lady Gaga, she's very famous with the young kids today. So we were out at the concert in Atlanta, handing gospel tracks out to people, talking to people. And, uh, whew, rough crap. Uh, I haven't heard that many curse words in a while. I, uh, I just tell my mom later, I, I haven't been out a lot because I've been sick, and so I've been having on the streets a lot. And I said to mom, I said I was out there, and they had some of these, uh, they, it draws a very big homosexual crowd, a very big lesbian crowd from Sarah. And boy, I see these lesbians just laying into me, cursing me out and stuff like that. I said, mom, you know, it kind of felt good to get back out there, okay, and have a curse word flying in your direction, okay, because they hated God. But see, the one that hates God, you can still prick their heart. Yeah, that's right. The gospel track can prick their heart. Or a friend of mine was across the street with a big band. I was preaching across the street. And they would sit there and read his sign and stuff. I would just have some of them put their video cameras out and, and tape him street preaching. That means they're going to go back and do what? Listen to the video. But they're going to mock. Hey, look, look, look what we saw at the Lady Gaga concert. But their friends are going to listen to that. Okay? You can still prick that. It's the four, five, and six that you can't. Okay, they think they've got it all. They're happy in their in their lukewarm lifestyle and do that. Okay. Um, we also last week went to the Cher and Cindy Lauper concert. Okay, the Cher and Cindy Lauper concert. And Cher, uh, son. Okay, wait, daughter. Right, trying to get it off straight. Has now transformed into a. Uh, uh, okay, no. It was chastity mode, right? It's first, right? She was a girl first, now she's going to chastise and she's transformed into a man, okay? And so Cher is one of the biggest promoters of transgenderism, homosexuality, and she's promoted it big time. She's an evil, wicked woman. If you, uh, some of her tweets, some of the things she said about Sarah Palin and stuff like that, oh, wicked, evil. She's a nasty woman. Do you know why? Because truth affects people, doesn't it? She's a zero. And when people say, no, God made you a daughter, she's a daughter, she's not a man to be, and do that, okay? But see, we live in a world that walks with the authority of Scripture. Do you remember Bradley Manning? Uh, Bradley Manning stole some documents, uh, and he's been, uh, a fat, I believe he's been convicted already in the, in the military for uh, espionage, okay? He's a homosexual, uh, 22, 23, 24-year-old guy, okay? They have now, he wants to become a woman. So they brushed his surgery through the Pentagon as to help him change from a man to a woman. At the exact same time, we have waiting lists for veterans who are wounded in war that are dying because they can't get doctor help, but we're going to rush through the guy convicted guilty to get from a man to a woman. Do we live in crazy days or what's up? Crazy, crazy days. Hate the word of God in America and hate the scriptures that do this. But what are you, what are I going to do about that? Okay. Um, I was reading a book as I was studying for this last week, and this is what this guy said Are you a worldly, card playing, dancing, and theater going Christian? Are you a worldly, card playing, dancing, and theater going Christian? That book was written in 1919. And he was already concerned about the church in 1919 becoming a card play, theater going, dancing. What would that man say today if he lived in 2014? He might just keel over the heart attack he sees. Okay, but what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Get accepted or we're going to do something about that? Uh, thou sayest, standing up for thyself. They said, Thou sayest. So they're standing up against God, still defending themselves. Okay, when God already knows their true spiritual condition and do that. Just self-delusion, okay? Um, they were boasting as immediate judgment was announced uh, in the verse before, the, in, before that, okay? And did, okay, need of nothing. If you think you have a need of nothing, that's called pride. That is pride and you're in a danger zone at this point, okay? Humble yourself before the Lord, okay? Um, but the need of nothing means I don't even need Jesus. Right. Be very careful what, what I call a closed system. Okay, if if I order um, a, a glass of iced tea at a restaurant and it sits on the table, what temperature does it become? 
Yeah. It becomes the warm. You have to add cold tea from the outside to keep it cold. If you get a coffee in the restaurant here and just sit there, it eventually becomes what? Warm. 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 You have to add hot coffee to it to keep it hot. Okay. So again, we have to add. So you can't have the closed system. Okay. And um, need of nothing. Uh, we need everything. You know, we connect to the divine. Without Jesus, you can do well. Nothing. That's exactly right. Okay. We got to make sure we're connected into the divine. Okay. Reading the Bible, sharing our faith, uh, worshiping God, studying the good Christian literature, okay? getting into conversation. That's where uh, you really test yourself. I um, when I first started this thing, I don't know, 20, 22 years ago, I found out a couple of things very good. I knew more about the Bible than I thought I did. Okay, I was always reading the Christian. I got a Catholicism. We didn't read the Bible. I didn't read the Bible. But I also found out very quickly, I didn't know enough of that book to be as good as that. So it drove me to find ideas, it drove me to study it, drove me to find a health that could help help people who have legitimate questions out there and do them. Okay? They were poor, but they said we are wealthy. Okay, they couldn't even reach on the outside, outside but poor on the inside. Think about how much how many churches you drive around. And their churches are building. We have a church in Jockhead. I like you see that. I see some great things like that. And I'm sitting next to an eight piece on this plane flight drive. I fly back to Atlanta and I'm with some of the. He says, yeah, yeah. I drive a pass forward to God and I go to work and stuff. And it's this gigantic structure fucking very well in area of Atlanta. He calls it forward to God. That's what the boss of this is. You know what? Sometimes we're more impressed with our building. They want to go to the for Jesus Christ. I was in South Pennsylvania about two years ago. I spoke at a movie. At church at a movie. So, so behind me is the big old screen. Uh, there's, 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 there's a rise that seeks you. I've spoken to you on this stuff. The pastor did not want to spend his money on building. He better take his money to help homeless people, help people that needed food. And so they just ran into the, 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 the leader, which, which was, was good in two ways. ways. One, they saved tons of money. money, 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 money. But the second thing, they got to less of a local business. The theater owner wanted it there because they made extra money. And so I'm getting towards the end of the sermon. You can actually smell popcorn. Being yeah. pop over here because this is the million pop over here because they were giving me like 12 million movies and stuff. Okay? So when I just got asked, I talked to the manager, the theater, and he had grown up in church uh, back as a young kid, but he had walked away. Man, I have six talks right outside of the theater, okay, where all the customers came in and stuff. But again, I mean, thinking about that, what, what do we most of us think we're wealthy, but actually we're poor as we do that, right? Um, the church or the MBC was not burdened with debt. They were burdened with wealth. Think about like that. They were burdened with debt. They were burdened with wealth. You think that you, you know, sometimes you think wealth is what you want. I read the studies of Bible readers. One study of Bible over 50% of Bible readers won over a million dollars that they wish they would have never won the money. They had more trouble ever since. Uh, Charles Barber asked his friend, and it's like, I'll tell you. He said, more trouble ever since they had money, 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 money. Because people always know they want money. They want money. They want money. People want money. Worry about that stuff. Like, well, you don't have to worry about that. It's no big thing to do that. Okay? They were blind. They were really short sighted. They weren't thinking head heavy things with a treasure that would be forever. Um, they had inherited spiritual vision. He said they were naked, but they were well known. That by the way, was well known for the black woolen garments that they made. They sold these people from all their bodies and stuff like that. And what they needed was a white raiment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like white Jesus Christ. Go to verse 18. I counsel thee to buy thee gold, try to buy that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy naked do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, okay, that thou mayest see. They have three problems that God had every one of the three problems with them, okay? Poverty, buy me gold, refined by fire, refined by righteousness. You want to refine life, don't you? You go through the tribulations, trials, don't you come out better at the end of those and you keep trust on the Lord? Yeah, you know, you, 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 they're tough as you go through, but it molds the character of who you are down the road and do that, okay? Um, when I, I, at Christmas time, I love to go to malls with witness because of, uh, when it was cold, is everybody cold up here? here by the way? Okay. And uh, uh, when it's cold, people go inside. Okay, to, 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 okay. I have a yeah, Russian friend who reads my books over to Russia. He's actually translated to him. I was in Russia. And uh, 
Uh, they're outside, you know, even in the cold winter, they stay on the street corners and hand trash and talk to people, but, but there is an outside view of it, even when it's cold outside. But, so when it's cold out, we go inside to the coffee shops, the student unions at the college campuses, but malls. So we have, I think it's 18 major malls in Atlanta, and we have malls, 18 of these things. Okay, we have a serious shopping problem in Atlanta. So I go to all the malls uh, to witness the people. Because sinners love buying gifts, and I like sinners, so we're definitely good for them. So I go to the malls, but I'm in this one mall, Fifth Plaza, and across from this big bed, and it's the wealthiest mall in Atlanta. I always watch a Christmas, what's the busiest store? And the busiest store, every single Christmas time I'm there, is a store called Tiffany's. You know, Tiffany, you heard your Tiffany's, right? Tiffany, the place you can go into, and you can't afford anything. Okay, and it's so expensive in that place, right? And then one year there was a line of people outside waiting to get things and put on their credit card to go into debt for somebody. Okay, and it was well that had no eternal value to it. And yet there was a line of people trying to get things. They'll go for God's will and do that. Think about that. They were blind. Lately, they were known for eyesight. They crushed rock and jumped on people's eyes. That's what they were known for. But yet they couldn't see. Because they thought they were okay with God and do this lukewarm lifestyle and do this, okay? Um, you heard of Bonham, the lead singer for YouTube. He's a guy called Bonham. And uh, he's a very famous, he's a very famous he's a Christian who he claims Christianity. Okay? Uh, in his concerts a couple of years ago, he was wearing a headband that said coexist. You've seen the coexist bumper stickers and stuff. Have okay, you ever seen that? They walk up to the person in the car and excuse me, can you explain your bumper sticker? Okay, it's a very easy way to talk to these people. But uh, bottom line, the coexist, and so the C of coexist is the crescent one of the slum. The X of coexist is the star of David, and the T of coexist is the cross of Christ. Okay, so the, the, the cross of coexist is the Islam, Judaism, and the cross of Christ. And Bono was doing in his concerts, he was going Jesus, Jew, Muhammad, all true. Jesus, Jew, Jew Muhammad, and all to our subconscious. Jesus, Jesus, Jew, Muhammad, and it's true. So you're trying to say all those religions are what? They're all the same. Okay, is that true? true? No, and something like that that will lead the lukewarm church in today's day. Because you're thinking he's born again, you're thinking he's teaching the truth, but we don't want to offend somebody. And the Jesus of those religions is completely different. Completely different. Okay, is Tom, the Jewish guy, comes in the plane plane coming in two days ago, that he did not believe that Yeshua was the Messiah. Okay, well, I know he's the Messiah. These are completely different Jesus that we're talking about here. Okay, but yet you have to get like, so what are you going to do? Are you going to stay at Yeshua? Are you going to do something about it? Uh, a camp, uh, me and some friends spoke at, uh, we had an early camp. Uh, she was a college student at Purdue University. She made a commitment at camp. For one, one solid year, she was doing nothing to the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now think about that for just a second. She made a commitment for one solid year, she was doing nothing to the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that a heavy commitment? Yes or no? That's a heavy commitment. Think about that. Can you make that commitment? Can you challenge your kids to make that commitment? Because if you make that commitment, God's going to test that commitment to trust us. She's off the college of Purdue. She's in the classroom. 300 students, professors of your professor gives you this assignment. There's a vote. And there's 40 people on the boat. And the boat is sinking. Okay? And on the boat, you have this whole mix of people. You've got whites, blacks, uh, Asians, Hispanics, Jews, Muslims, Christians, Atheists, rich. You've got four. You've got five mix of 40 people. And you have a life raft that holds 10 people. And you have to decide which of those 40 people will get on the life raft that are going to All right, now, now, has anyone ever done this assignment before? Anyone ever done that before? Oh, good, because I did this in high school. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Did the assignment. Okay, do you know there's anything wrong with the assignment first of all? There's anything wrong with it. They're making you play God. That's exactly right. That's the first problem. They're making you play God. Choosing one over another and doing it okay. Um, they eliminate the biblical worldview. Could you pray for another shift to come by and rescue all 40 people? Sure you could. Sure, you could. But see, they eliminate all that out because they're trying to push something on you. Well, this girl in the classroom, she figured out what was going on. She's sitting in the back. She raised her hand. 
Okay, so take guts to raise your hand up from the 300 students and professor. Okay, are you training people like that? Are you training people when, uh, with, with Carl's DVDs and in your homeschool groups and stuff? Are you training so when they get that question or they think about the arc or how, many, uh, how big is it can they fill the answer? They're going to raise their hand in the classroom. And for, for them, you forget the threshold to shock the other 300 kids if someone can think through and figure out that they actually could have been. Are you going to do that? Professor said, yes, ma'am. She said, I cannot do this assignment. He said, why can't you do this assignment? She said, because of my belief in God, every single person in that boat has the exact same value. True statement, yes or no? Right back to Genesis again. Genesis, we're all made in the image of God. She knows the scriptures. Professor said, if you cannot do this assignment, you can stand up right now and get out of this classroom. Okay, what you do? Got up, I walked down, walked out the side door, and was gone. And he said, Don't you ever come back to class again? Gone, gone. It was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It was Monday, 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 they're preaching to your kids. I read an article about how the Northeast atheist professors love to come to the Southern University just to come get those Bible kids and teach them correctly that the parents are between our darkness and I live down south. That's an attack on your family. You better ready to fight back to do that, okay? So there he looked up and said, Excuse me, did I not tell you not to come back to this classroom? She said, Yes, you did, but I need this class to graduate. He said, your name is so and so, is it not? She said, yes, it is. And they think classrooms, remember, you're not a name, you're a no number. But remember, she goes through life, no one's a no number. They're a what? Name. When I do prison admission, I don't learn their number, I learn their name. You're not a no number, God, you're a name. What's with the land of life? Name. And people's name. I always challenge people. The student in school, know that bad man's name. He's not a hey, you. He's got a name, he's got a family, and learn those persons. Okay. I've been studying you ever since Monday. If you stand up for God and Jesus Christ, Christ will check you out. Yes, he'll no, no. yes, yes, check you out. Doesn't mean you have to be perfect, okay? But they will check you out. I've been studying you ever since Monday. He said, you're a Jew here at Purdue University. Are you not? She said, yes, I am. He said, uh, you have a 4.0 here at Purdue University. Do you not? She said, yes, I do. Y'all, we give our best effort everywhere we go. Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes, do. Don't try to get 50% effort and expect God to bless us. We're always on time to work. We're always got our assignments printed on time. We give good effort, encouraging other people. But watch God bless that. Okay? Now, we're not perfect, okay? but we should be striving for perfection. He said, You're offering this huge scholarship, and you won't get this scholarship if you're not passing the session. So no, he said, You're willing to risk all of that for this God you believe in? And her answer was, Yes, I am. Professor says a true story. Anybody that at least in their job that much, we need to hear from. You're going to come down here right now. You're going to stand behind this podium right here. You're going to teach this class for the next 55 minutes about this God. She stood up. She walked down here, dropped her backpack down, and laid out her web. Bible, she talked to her class for 55 minutes about the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolute true story. Okay. I'll make a guarantee. Not a kid in that class or a professor has ever forget that that lady their entire life. It's an impossible thing. I've been in the same class like 30 years ago at all. Okay. But see, that's 8, 9, and 10 type lately. That's a 10 lately right there. Okay. That's, that's a real 10 of the world. If you want one, for sure. Okay. Um, that's a pop up story. First three, three, three times lately. Okay. Uh, she was not going to live four, five, six. Because four, five, and six was not going to help that professor. It's not going to help the students in the classroom. Okay? Where do you stand? Would you do the same thing? Are you going to get power and not raise your hand up? Because you don't know how many hands can fit on the R. Are you going to get questions or not knowing who you would say about that vote and do that? Think about that process, okay? I'll go to verse 19 and read it a little bit As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore. And what? Repent. As many as I love, I'm going to do all of this. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth through the four, five, and six. And God still what? Loves us. He still loves us as the four, five, and six. And he knows he's not done with us yet. He knows all I have to 
do is he's chasing me. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad, you got this as a kid, right? As much as this kid, I was a wild one back in that day. As much as I hated that, I look back at my life and I'm so thankful my parents would let me run wild. Okay, it happened during your stretch, but they chased me, they distanced me, and I finally realized that because they cared about me, and they knew if I kept heading down that road, there was a danger down that road. There was a stop sign, there was a cliff, and I'm heading straight off. I don't know that I'm a little kid, okay, but they were chasing me in directions. It's because they, they love me. So it's got to chase us. He loves us. He doesn't want to say they 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 Remember, the church, church it wasn't all out, 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 Yeah, kids, 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 kids
I walk the street. I said, Karen, Karen, no, I understand that. The message is wrong. Every church I go to, I think it's such a lot of rather or worship, worship, and they split. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is what this still says. Okay, later, 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 it's not, it's not biblical. Okay, okay. But, but what happens, what happens is many ladies, ladies fix fixers. They see a see off, they want to fix it. Okay, my mom said, what do you think? But, but if a church, if a church doesn't have a church, it's not your job to build that. God was on the side of that. They're on the side of the book. You pray for God to bring the right way. What? Who? Who? Man. Man. You have to have that. You can't jump in and fix everything. Okay, that's the beautiful world of the world. Way to live your life inside this small small Jesus Christ, right? It'll be the way it fits. Well, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Make make the decision. I was always the same. I don't know if you're getting out of the camp because I question that at that point. Okay? Okay? So when I told the end of the guy's guys, I said, all I did was ask ask your people to to then 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 he looked, he looked at me and said, I said, church, 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 I recommend, I recommend, oh, 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 I don't, I don't have to have and done, done, but then they might invite me back. back. I don't care. I don't care. Do you know how many, do you know how many nails I got? From women in there, there. there. That's the thing. Thank, thank you so much. Would you share the life of God anymore? Because he didn't know what the life of God was. Our church should not be doing this. Okay, see, they want us to stand at the table. Our church, our church, our church. But it's really one of those things. 2021 and to him, but over the world, I'm a grand 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 so I can't worry with everybody that everybody is about. You're not here to be seen in any of these people here to face God. Having lunch, 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 Evan, Evan is the bad, the bad man. Okay, okay. Where you, where you get told, okay, okay. I said, we I got, said, we got a rush here, share it, babes. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said, what were you, what doing? were you doing? Well, we, well, we walked to the bus, bus, bus on the street, street. So, okay, okay. okay. And then, we, then we, we, you know, you know, some, some of the interesting, interesting, living in Arabic Arab 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 Testament. I said, you got, you got to go to that. Well, we, we handed out about twenty thousand Arabic Testament. Street, street, and I'm sitting there having a bunch of lunch with these ladies, and I'm sitting across the table, and I'm like four, five, five, six, six. Mm -hmm. And some chatting, chatting with these women. And um, um, they went to jail, and Jesus Christ, Christ, they let me let me fight, fight, and finally got out of this prison. Finally got out of the prison. They 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 got out of the prison. But the day you're taking the power of power, go back to the woods, stay, stay on the front lines, lines, run, 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 wash, wash, and something like that. See, we don't belong in five or five or six. Right, right? We belong in eight, nine, and ten. It's an individual call to play with these sin ends. So, what is constant controls all you need? You need to deal with the chair, chair, and you need to. Up here, up here, make this all part of the If you have lived live more five, five, five or six days, days, or 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 days, or
That's right, that's right. Finish this race, race, race well. well. Finish it strong. strong. Yeah, yeah, so it's eight, eight, nine, 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 ten. Because eight, 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 nine, nine, ten, ten. Uh, uh, matter of fact, there's another say, say, stop, stop, nine, 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 ten. 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 Matter of fact, all the dark, dark, dark throws at you, just make sure the light shine well. Right, 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 I always, always die, die with no regrets. Die, die with no regrets. If you would die, 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 the security the security world from last time. Okay. Every everybody has something on this list where they share share their but but they face those might be on that list. Write your list list out. Check check everything off. Guy will know what live five or five six guy and die with eight eight ten ten. All the days days. Father thank you, thank you. You're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Also, love, 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 Father, remind us, remind us, you are, you are the five, five, six, six friend, friend, no one there, there. Everything, Everything is there, there, there rise, rise, Father. We don't we like, like, see, see, mirror, mirror. You don't, you don't like us well. But you love, love us, love us, give us high, 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 So, so, I, I have needed, have needed so, so, so much, so much, Father. Thank you, thank you for the, uh, second chance, chance, or third chance, chance, one of the thousand chance, chance, you can do Father, Father, make sure, make sure the Minnesota so here, here, the bar, 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 the bar,